what do we talk about on the show more than anything else? Watching movies on planes. Watching movies on airplanes. Yeah. Mm, really? Yeah, because <clears throat> it's a neat experience. It's well, there's beautiful. there's there's a process of watching it because you're emotionally more vulnerable, right? On the, on on the airplane. airplane. You not know this? <laughs> no. Yeah, because of the I mean, we've talked because about this the a lot altitude. of time. Because yeah, of the yeah. altitude. You, and like, you actually have a tendency to cry more. Yeah, Dylan cried watching Coco yeah. when he saw really? it on a plane. Yeah, I was I was emotionally vulnerable and on a plane. And on a plane. <laughs> right? So, you know, but my favorite thing about it and something I talk about often is that how you can see people watching a movie over their shoulder. Mm, yeah, so I do that all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, sometimes you're supposed to be reading or like even you're listening to music and you just can't stop watching another yeah. person's movie. <laughs> and, uh, you know, normally it's like they're watching whatever the Oscar bait movie is because that's mm. when you watch those movies is on a plane or something like that. But this guy, first off, so we're like boarding. We're getting ready to get on the plane and we look over. He's on the way home from Seattle for Christmas. And he's like seven feet tall, <laughs> like three hundred and fifty pounds. Nice. He's got uh, him and his wife or girlfriend or something. He's like he's old. He has a ponytail, big beard. He's walking around with a cane, and the cane has like all of these road signs all over it. Mm. And he doesn't need it to walk. It's like his thing. Yeah, is yeah. that he has it's this an aesthetic cane. choice. Yeah, okay. it's his aesthetic choice. And I'm looking at him like you. Can, I, I poked back and I was like, you can only see these guys in. Washington State, like yeah. they don't make them anywhere else yeah. other than the Pacific Northwest. And so we go on the plane, and we're sitting there, and he's like in front of us and to my left, and him and <laughs> him and his wife or girlfriend are sitting there, and for the whole flight, he does two things: one, he just looks at photos of them. It, he, just, <laughs> he has a, like an iPad. He just has it up. He has it set up, and he's just scrolling through it, looking at photos of them. Right? And like, are they particular like vacation? No, it, photos? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, they're yeah. like at a like at a park. Yeah, or like you know, drinking beer out of a stein at mm. like an outdoor Oktoberfest or something, and, yeah. then, and that's just that. He's just scrolling, and he'll click on he's one. reminiscing about the good times. And he'll look at so. it for a little while, and then he'll like scroll, and he'll keep looking. But then he's switched to his video <laughs> section of his iPad. No sweat. No. <laughs> <laughs> he switched to the video section of his iPad, and just starts watching music videos from like 2005. <laughs> <laughs> For like, no, I'm not even joking. <laughs> three hours. Like he would sit there and he would like be nodding along to you know like a Christina Aguilera song, and then it would finish and then he would just press <laughs> another one and it would be like Rob Thomas up there. <laughs> like what is going beautiful, on? Beautiful. I, yeah. I mean, a, a very generous reading of the situation would be that this man is a famous uh, music video producer, right? You know, who's watching who's all his great watching classic all these music videos. Yeah, yeah. That he himself directed. <laughs> Who knows? Right. You know. You, that is a man of mystery, right? There. It is a man. He is a man of mystery. He could regale you with so many tales of being at parks and taking yeah. pictures with his wife. You know, <laughs> you said he things. was seven feet tall. Yeah, he was he, super tall. You know, rather rather like husky. He wasn't like you know grotesque, but he was he was a, you know a substantial. Stout. He was a stout man. He was a stout man with mm -hmm. a cane, and it wasn't for walking. He was like, and he had like one of those. Uh, he had like a newsies cap on too. Mm. You know, he was definitely trying to go for something. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think he he pulled it off? Right. What's your estimation? Yeah, the best of his abilities. He was also wearing Burks without socks, and it was when we landed in Detroit, like negative five <laughs> degrees. <laughs> so a stronger man than I. And there you go. Was he wearing long sleeve pants or short sleeve pants? Sp sleeve sleeve <laughs> pants. <laughs> he was, was wearing, he wearing shorts short or pants. He was wearing a, like capri length. Okay, you know there was okay. the sort of things. But guys who wear a lot of sandals will have like there's some good ankle going. Yeah, on, so. yeah, exactly. Got to got to look over and see a bunch of his ankle as well. So well, I mean, hey, you're a luckier man than I. Though. Yeah, no, yeah. What about you guys? Uh, <laughs> what music video would you watch on the plane? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I've got a I've got a plain story. Uh, only because this is the first time it's been... John, you better have a plane story. Okay. Because right? yeah, no, no, apparently this is what we're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a positive watching a movie on a plane story. Wow. I know. You know, nothing but negatives or weird things. I just saw somebody watching John Wick, and I thought, I want to watch John Wick again. Mm -hmm. That was that was really and what it came... you watched it? No, I, did, I couldn't, because <laughs> I didn't have the plug-in. So I watched them watch a great movie, <laughs> and then felt like I had lost <laughs> something and wished I could go, you know, watch it on my own time. So now I just... I've seen a movie that I I really want to watch again, you know. Okay. So sometimes magic does happen, you know, and just you get a good experience on the plane. <laughs> I don't know if I'd call it that. But... <laughs> no, I love watching movies yeah. over people's shoulders. Like yes. if I get tired of watching actual movies, it's the next best thing. Yeah. Yeah. This is great. I don't know. Yeah. It's so much fun. Yeah. Especially when there's something uncomfortable happening on the screen. <laughs> yeah, they tense up. Yeah. You know, they're looking around. They're looking around. <laughs> they're hoping that you, the exact situation of you looking at the yeah. screen over their shoulder is not happening. Not happening. <laughs> yeah. It's like uh, whenever you see somebody with an ear ear 
or on the on the train or an e-reader on the plane uh, there's like a 95 percent chance that they're reading something that they like <laughs> they don't want to have an actual really? book so that you can see it yeah there's like mm, a consistent okay. thing yeah because yeah. the cover yeah because yeah, like yeah. e-readers have a reputation for this where it's like oh yeah the only people who use e-readers are people who like read pornography i've never or something. i've never read that yeah stereotype no. ever and uh, this is gonna be I, I i read mostly on an e-reader and trust <laughs> me <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> with the way you look and everything it yeah, doesn't help. No, yeah. Kidding, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> i read mostly with an e-reader so like that's my uh and that's like my primary way for when I'm traveling, especially. And so, but you know, it's like all these videos of people finding e-readers on the train and like opening them up. And it's just nothing but, you know, mm. just crazy stuff. So, <laughs> uh, that's something I like to, I always picture when I see somebody reading digitally. One time I did actually see a woman reading nice. a book of uh, dubious content <laughs> <laughs> with the largest possible print. It like took up her entire <laughs> iPad as she was like scrolling. I was like, oh, that word is uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> In Korea, they love to read like manga on their phones it's mm -hmm. crazy they're always on their phones yeah yeah and it's always really questionable yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like, <laughs> and no one cares everyone just doesn't yeah that's sort of i think uh this kind of comes with the territory with manga yeah if you live in asia definitely yeah 100%. so wait, so is is what do you is it like they they're they're on like just streaming websites or whatever i don't or? know what it is they have whole there's like apps for this like whole, yeah they're really I mean, they're pretty advanced when it comes to reading manga on their phone. Yeah. I don't know how it works. I don't know. <laughs> Say what you want about Korea, but they're beyond us in so many ways. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Specifically, manga on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Because you were in Korea this summer, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was. I was working. Yeah. Mm. So where, where were you working? I was working at the U.S. Embassy Okay, in cool. Korea. Doing yeah. what? Like pushing papers or? Nothing. I did I did absolutely nothing. <laughs> I'm not sure I should say this. I might see this. I don't know. But I watched a lot of YouTube while I was there. <laughs> What's your poison? What do you what do you watch when you're at, you know trying to work? At work, um, Jane sends me a lot of stuff. So yeah, I watched. I actually watched the Shane Gillis special. Just yeah, 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 I watched yeah, that while I was there. Incredible, super yeah. good. I was like dying in my cubicle, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and the like, Korean the like Korean ladies would come over and look look at me every once in a while. Make sure I was okay. Yeah, but <laughs> not that you were working. Just that you were okay. <laughs> because in Korea, if somebody is laughing, there's something wrong. There's something, <laughs> something bad is happening in that room. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, I did nothing. I would sometimes I slept under my desk and I would like make a fortress out of like the chairs and my jacket so no one can see me. <laughs> I, I did nothing. That's like a, that's like having to take a summer class level of slacking. No, I, it was probably worse. It was probably <laughs> definitely worse because. <laughs> I got super bored. I was there yeah. paying me like twelve dollars an hour, and I hated it. It was like this is the worst. Yeah. I hate so wait, what were you, what was like? Did you technically have responsibilities or nothing? Well, because like, is, how's your Korean? Oh, it's, yeah, I don't speak Korean. At yeah. All. So yeah. then, it, like, what kind of work can you do? I like, do like editing work, like translating stuff. If I okay. ever got anything, yeah. Or I have to read certain articles that they can't read, but um, like written by like expats or by people who. Oh yeah, cables and whatnot, just editing yeah. whatever people were writing. A lot of the Korean. People trying to do English is it's very rough, so I they yeah they just asked me to do most of that. Mm -hmm. but, but you um, didn't really have a lot of stuff coming to your desk then. No, like nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, my very last assignment, I just didn't do it. I completely forgot about it. It was a pretty big <laughs> one too. <laughs> oh, and talking about plane stories, it gets super interesting. Yeah, I have this one super tall coworker. He's like seven feet tall, which is crazy in Korea. Oh that's, yeah, no, that insane. is that's yeah, insane in Korea. And he was yeah. Korean. He was Korean. Yeah. Okay. He had wow. Super good English, and um, he gave me the assignment, and I pushed it off, and then. And I didn't talk to him the whole time. I avoided like eye contact. And I left. <laughs> End of the summer, I left. And I didn't see him, except when I got on the plane. <laughs> he walks in, the, like I'm already sitting, and then he comes in through the, yeah, the yeah. plane door, like huge guy, so it's super noticeable. Yeah, and I'm like, oh damn! Like how does he? <laughs> how do you know I didn't finish the assignment? I'm yeah, like, he was coming to just pull you off the plane. No, yeah, I, yeah. it was crazy. Yeah, and he comes over and he like, looks at me and he like <laughs> reaches out and he's like. Hello, John. <laughs> like, Hello. <laughs> Hi. Uh. First thing he says, "Don't worry. This, you didn't have to worry about the assignment." He was like, "No." So he he's, he brought he, it up. He, yeah, he yeah, knew what was going thing, on. First yeah. thing he's like, it's all, "It's all good." And I was like, "Okay, thank you." <laughs> yeah, I mean, what else is he gonna say? Shame on you. Shame on your family. Like, yeah. like what do you? I imagine. Do you do? I imagine it would actually be sort of tough for them to even find work for you, right? Where it's yeah. like, "All right, we hired this guy, and he's just here." Well, the thing is, they usually put you somewhere where you'll. You'll fit. Like they look, they look at your what you're studying in school because a lot of college yeah. students. So like I had a engineering student friend, and they put him in like the engineering uh, utilities area. Yeah. And I have some people who are studying like what's it called? Linguistics. No, it's like PR. I don't know what. It's oh, like. oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like marketing and PR yeah, kind which, of thing. Yeah, yeah. that's communication. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. so they all got that sort of stuff. But they didn't know what to do with me because the way I filled out my application, I said I was in college from like twenty. 
17 to 2020 or something. Oh, you didn't like put the line. I didn't do to present. I yeah. just said to 2020 because yeah. that's what it was. And they yeah. thought I'd like drop down or something. <laughs> they thought I was some sort of college dropout who was just in there because I was like a Nepo baby. And they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They just put me in some corner of some random, completely useless section. And I did nothing. <laughs> you lived yeah. up to the potential Nepo baby yeah, reputation. I did, yeah, <laughs> I did actually. <laughs> so I did. How much did you do? Like how much tooling around did you do? How much of Korea did you see? Oh, like walking around. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, a lot of it. A lot Where's of the it. embassy? It's in Seoul. Okay, so somewhere. it's in Seoul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. We were I was, right. I was we wondering lived, if it was in Seoul. We lived. I right imagined in the middle it was, Seoul. but mm-hmm. yeah. Don't want to make assumptions. I don't want to make any assumptions like, about oh, no, no, Korea. Yeah. I don't know the geography super well. But. No, it's just well Seoul. That's like the only. <laughs> it's like the only important geography. Seoul, Samsung. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but no, saw a lot of Korea. Korean yeah. food actually, my opinion of it went, it went down. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's really, was it because you think it wasn't for because you 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 spent a lot of time in asia so i imagine it wasn't because like you have a very americanized view of the food or anything but actually i might though because yeah well because my mom is oh she's the korean one but she's very american Mm -hmm. yeah and my only experience with the korean food has been hers and has been in america so Oh, I think in that way, yeah, it was Americanized. Yeah. So when I get there, I eat all the weird esoteric things. I'm like, ew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gross. Uh, gross. Ooh. There, there's actually, I think, a certain level of, you know, I, I think a lot of Westerners like to think like, oh, you know, when I go, I'm going to be the one who yeah. can eat the weird esoteric mm. food, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes, like, the way, weird esoteric food is weird and esoteric for a reason. Yeah. Like, yeah. one time, uh, when we were in New York, we went to a dim sum place, and my uh, my sister-in-law's boyfriend was like ordering for us and he was like oh fried pig intestines this is wild mm, nice. and then and then rebecca was like oh uh you know uh, and she looked he looked at her and was like we should have this and she kind of was like oh okay yeah sure we should have this and then they bullied everybody else Never at the go table with the intestines. That's yeah. A terrible yeah. Idea. well that was funny thing was is that the guy came up and we were like and we want this and he was like no, <laughs> you don't. I promise. And they're like, no, 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 we do. We understand. We understand what you're, you're just playing the game. Right? <laughs> we're, you know, we're just a bunch of guilos, you know, like you just blah, blah, you know. Is it in New like, York, you said? Yeah. It's not in, in Asia. In New York. In yeah, New York, yeah, right. Yeah. And he's like, no, you don't want this. I promise. Right. And like, <laughs> we had to convince him. It took us like five minutes to convince him. And then, of course, everybody had one bite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It literally tastes like poop. Yeah. Like it just straight up. Yeah. Ugh. Literally just tastes like poop. So. I don't know. I'm just curious if there is, because they have, that's on the meal for a reason. I'm curious who, what the actual Chinese guy who like really loves that is like, you know? Yeah. I don't know. It's probably nostalgic. I think that's a big part yeah. of it. Yeah. You know? But also, I hear there's like genetic like reasons for liking certain foods. Yeah. Were you the one we explaining were, that? We were okay, talking I was like, about this last Where week. did I get this? Yeah. From? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's because when at a certain point in a pregnancy, when everything that you eat informs um, the, the preferences baby. of the baby. Mm. Right. That sounds like pseudoscience. No, it's not. No, this is true. Like, it'll be like, it'll, you know. Like, how much can, like, that, because that's preference. It's probably, it's probably based primarily on, like, the big things, like salty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, sweet. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, um, umame. You know, (laughs) umami. Umami. Yeah. (laughs) Umami. And (laughs) zooey bobby. Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, and, and then when they're born, they might have, like, a certain preference in that direction. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So. You know, there's like people but who, I mean, I can think of countless examples of kids that have the exact opposite preferences of their parents, right? Well, you know, but you know, sometimes parents, you know, moms don't eat like normal <laughs> when they're pregnant, so that might be part of it. And then True. also, mm. also, you know, it's, that partially might be the reason why you know people who have very different cuisines in different parts of the world, different parts of the world with very different like flavor profiles, might be able to like be a part of that easier, mm-hmm. is because like. There's certain levels of sweetness that a vast majority of the world mm-hmm. is alienated by when they come to America mm-hmm. and they eat a processed food. And they're like, how much sugar did you put in this? Mm-hmm. Um, if you go to the Waffle House and order one waffle. <laughs> <laughs> has enough sweetness to kill 25 <laughs> Mongolian steppe people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, goodness gracious. Uh, so is, other than the food, though, what was the impression? Uh, Korea? Yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's super good. They have good subways. Mm, Comparatively, yeah. compared to Asia, and it, they have high standards in Asia for subways. And yeah, theirs were really top notch. Yeah, mm. shout out to <laughs> did you like, Korean subways? Like, did they make the sandwich for you, or did you still <laughs> <laughs> sandwiches? Yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I, I'm just saying, maybe they had a specially good subway sandwiches. Oh, uh, subway! I was yeah. like, Sandwich? <laughs> sandwiches? <laughs> <laughs> they did have subways as well, which were oh, okay. very good. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. This, so they did have exceptional subways. Yeah. <laughs> they did. Yeah. No, and there was one right next to my work, so I would go there every single. Day, and they knew me. <laughs> what was the difference? Is, uh, not much. Oh, not really? Very, very you could little. still get salami and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, they had some Asian menu items like shrine, 
fr- shrimp or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I said shrimp. Yeah, you said shrimp. <laughs> I was going to just like, tell me. Uh, I'm like, I, 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 you shrimp? telling me a frimp shrimp this <laughs> rice? <laughs> oh, uh, no. I uh, made meatball subs. Is that a thing here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I thought that was a weird thing. Was like, yeah, I, I, I think they don't. I don't know if they do it anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they do, but they're a lot more expensive than they used to yeah. be, according to my father. Yeah. Really? He's, he is a fan of the, a big, the meatball big sub. Big subway. Mm-hmm. A big subway head. Yes, yes. Mm. Uh, which, you know, talk about dude facts. We talk about dude facts sometimes on this this podcast. Yeah. Facts that dudes say. Did you know that there are more subways in the world than there are McDonald's? That's true. Oh, really? Yeah. Weird fact. It's because, I mean, if you, if you, this is actually a thing that, because if you drive through like rural Michigan, which we do a lot of around here, <laughs> you know, the town that is just too small for a McDonald's. But like, still has a subway somehow. Really? Yeah. Oh, like over in like Horton or something. Yeah. 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 I mean, like, there's a lot of places like that, or the fact that we have one in Hillsdale and in Jonesville. But we also have a McDonald's Mm. in Hillsdale and Jonesville. That's true. That's true. But the the real reason is that their standards when it comes to picking up franchises are incredibly low. You can you can get a subway franchise for a very low amount of money and with very low credentials because they just want as many as possible. It's just felons. Just felons run subways. Yeah. If you ever, if you meet a guy who says they have the subway, <laughs> you just kind of watch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the studio with John O'Connor. Yes. Welcome, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. College student. Yeah. Cool mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep, all those. All yeah. those things. <laughs> Former uh, agent of America, uh, uh, yeah, Asia. apparently uh, yeah. representing yeah, yeah. our ambassador, yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> representing our our nation and on the on foreign soil. Can what? you can you refer to yourself as an agent in that instance? Are you agent like as, are, as like are the diplomats? Could they say they're uh, an, an American agent in a foreign land? Well, I mean, Maybe. agents are pretty broad words. Like, well, exactly. That's I feel what like, I mean. I don't know. I just feel like I'm an agent. I'm always agent. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um. I mean, diplomat, that's the yeah, standard term. Yeah. I just, you know, I want to... So you and going I want as that... many possible agents of our country in other places. <laughs> right. You know? so, so you going into that subway was an act of diplomacy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're mm-hmm. having a, you know, a, a broken conversation yeah. with the guy making your sandwich. I couldn't speak Korean, so I was basically forcing them to speak English. <laughs> yeah. I was kind of like helping our relations in some way. Yeah. Way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You made them more, uh, you know, kind to Americans in general because you were so kind to them, right? Yeah. Is, is is Korea the kind of place where, like, you know, this is the case in a lot of, you know, Europe or, um, you know, in a lot of a good chunk of Africa as well, but, you know, is Korea the kind of place where most people kind of have a baseline English thing going yeah. on mm-hmm. because of how, you know, influential the culture is? They teach it. They also teach it in their schools. Okay. Is the thing. As primary? I would say American and English are not super... It's more prominent in like Japan. Or yeah, yeah, I was actually about to ask mm-hmm. which one you thought had a higher percentage of English speakers. You would say it's Japan. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Also, their language has similar sounds to ours, so they're they're a little better at English. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Korean language has such weird noises. It's yeah. Super hard, super difficult for them to learn English and us to learn Korean. I've heard that the Korean alphabet though is fairly easy. Once yeah, I think so. I think alpha, so. Once it you was, use the alphabet mm-hmm. down, it's like designed to be super easy. Yeah. yeah. It's like one of the first ever like synthetic languages or something. Yeah. And they're super proud of that. They love that. Yeah, they, lo- they love being Esperanto. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> they have one guy designed it. They can like point to the guy who designed their language, which is crazy. Like yeah. no yeah. other. Like, oh yeah, John English. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he designed English. Yeah. Like, no, no uh, uh, I having once tried the Duolingo for Japanese, I can tell you. Kim that, Korean. I just got I just yeah, right. I was trying to think of whatever the job <laughs> would be. Uh, I, I can tell you that kanji is incredibly hard to learn. Uh, and just in general, kanji, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I just have a hard time with Japanese characters. It just it, it feels Wait, for what reason were you because you have offices in Japan? Yeah, yeah. It was when yeah. I first got the job, and I was like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna learn Japanese, mm, uh, yeah. and to help with the, working with the Japanese office, and then that lasted about four weeks, but. <laughs> kanji is the is the Chinese ones. Were you are you referring to like the Chinese characters or the? No, uh, I thought the kanji was the because I thought kanji was yeah the, in Jap- Japanese. No, so right there, what you're looking at right there, <laughs> underneath, yeah. yeah, steel ball run, right in the parentheses there, that is kanji. Okay, yes, yeah, so that is so, the Chinese characters. Okay, okay, right? okay, okay, uh, okay. Yeah. I believe, I believe, you know, crucify me if that is not. The case. <laughs> uh, but I believe, I mean it. They actually it. really like to do that in Japan. They. They did crucified for a long people. time. Yeah, yeah they, they crucified a lot of people. So, yeah, they yeah. <laughs> they, they still hang people, which is crazy. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I, I, I just I thought that was interesting. Things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but, I mean, that doesn't happen often out there, though. I mean, they don't have a lot of murders, do they? No, I don't think so. They're pretty. Um, yeah, they don't like to murder people. 
<laughs> Except for the former prime minister, apparently. Yeah, which is great. I was so sad. That was, <laughs> I love Shinzo Abe so much. He's my favorite. He's kind of he was kind of Japan's dad for a long time. Yeah, and yeah, I think he, he still he still was afterwards. Yeah, and he uh, he wasn't afraid to eat food in front of people, which I think a lot of politicians are. Yeah, so he was specifically like, in Japan or just in general. I think in so, general he didn't yeah. really care. He was, there's yeah. so many pictures of him eating food. It's really it's crazy. You <laughs> yeah. guys should look it up. <laughs> That is the best part about the, uh, the an election year is when all of the uh, Ohio, candidates Iowa go to state the, fair. Yeah, go to the state fair. Yeah, and, and eat uh, food. And eat food. <laughs> yeah, lots of pictures. And they always of candidates eat, eating they're corn. Idiots dogs. though, because yeah. they're always picking phallic ass food. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> just eat like a funnel cake or something. <laughs> I'm yeah. deep fried cucumber. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it's always like that. They're always eating somewhere that's like you're like okay, man. If you want that photo, then you can have that photo. Yeah. Someone's gonna take it. You got to do the super base thing and eat it lengthways. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> right. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, uh, guys, this show is actually about something. You know? Yeah. Mm. In, so, in some senses, it's not Seinfeld. You know, we're not about nothing over here. Uh, we like to bring people on and talk to them about what they're into right now. Their monomaniacal obsessions. Why it's called mm. monomaniacs. And so, we're bringing on John O'Connor to talk about his. John, what is your monomaniacal obsession? Uh, my monomaniacal obsession. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Don't worry. Is, about um, it. Naked mole rats. Ah, naked mole rats. <laughs> All right, that's cool. All right, All right. You, you had me in the first half. <laughs> naked. <laughs> uh, all right, so this, uh, this is, is great. I love this. this. Okay, so from like a from a Ron stoppable perspective. No, actually, or? yeah, that actually got me back into them because okay. I was into them a few like a few years ago. But then I, I was reading about Kim Possible recently, and I was yeah. like, oh, naked mole rats. I forgot about those guys. Yeah. yeah. So I went in. So what what is the allure? What 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 makes you? Are you interested in owning one, or are you just no, interested in them no. from like a just a general the the platonic form of a naked mole? Yeah, rat. they're crazy. Like, yeah, yeah, their nature is insane. <laughs> it's, it's, also, they look kind of gross and weird, which is yeah. kind of fun. Yeah. So wait, tell us about their nature then. Um. Well. Yeah, that's no why <laughs> they are. They're just like one of the weirdest mammals on earth. They have yeah. like, well, I don't know where to start. There's so much going on. With yeah, yeah, rats. yeah, just yeah. just start us from the beginning. Well, they're, they're the only like cold blooded like mammals. OK, I think that's correct. I don't know. Or they're sorry. It's been a while. You know, you don't know. You don't need to think it's correct. Just say it. That's okay, the point okay. of this show. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're like, as possible. they're like yeah. they're cold blooded, which is super. Well, they're only like two creatures that are cold blooded. Two yeah, mammals. mammalian cold bloods. Mm hmm. Um, they don't really need oxygen to survive, and they hate the sun, and they <laughs> eat poop, and they're they're just crazy. Animals. Yeah, because every I I remember watching a documentary about one when I was in grade school because you know that's like a classic like ew <laughs> uh, sort of sort of thing. Whenever I look at one, I'm like these things are chapped as hell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that one. Well, they're like naked, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, they're hairless. But unlike a lot of hairless creatures, their skin does, like it doesn't look like it's going well for them. Oh yeah, yeah it looks. Yeah. It looks, it looks, looks uncomfortable to be in. Yeah. yeah, it looks uncomfortable to be in. It looks like scabby, and you're like, somebody lotion these guys up. No, their skin though is super important. It's very important that it's that way. Oh really? What yeah, for? it helps. I don't know. Apparently, it helps keep them like clean or something. Oh okay. It's um, it's like calloused. It's like armor. <laughs> like I don't know. Carapace. I don't know exactly. Yeah. I don't know why they're naked so much. <laughs> <laughs> I think being cold blooded is a part of it. It yeah. like, has to do with. Yeah. I'm curious then how they would do that temperature regulation because if they're underground mostly because like cold blooded creatures traditionally, um, you know, they get all of their heat transfer from like external sources. So mm -hmm. they'll sit on on a rock or something and they'll heat up and that'll kind of bring them to a safe body temperature. But well, I I'd imagine right because they're burrowers, you know, they're probably they do the thing that you're supposed to do if you're trapped on a cold mountain uh, with just the two of you, you know, and you gotta <laughs> gotta conserve the body heat, right? Yeah, yeah. If they're, they're, they're if they're cold blooded though, then how do they produce their body dog? heat? Dude, just <laughs> let me live my dream. Yeah. <laughs> no, they um they're this, they're called thermoconformers, which oh, means okay. they like they just like set their body temperature to be whatever the ambient temperature is. Oh, just, okay. Like, this is. The temperature this, I'm at now. This is a good temperature. And then they don't this die. This is what I vibe it at. Apparently, that, that's allowed, so yeah. we're just crazy. <laughs> Why don't we crazy. just do that? Yeah, no, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I imagine, though, that what that means is that there must be a really big like delineation between, like, based on where they are and their life expectancy because, you know, there's a, there's a pretty strong correlation between average life expectancy of a creature and how many beats per minute that their heart really? is, is set on. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, like... More often than not, the smaller a creature, high, higher BPM, there's like a good chance that it's going to be uh, fairly short lived, like a vole or something, because voles are, you know, like some of the most deadly uh, predators in the world, right? But they're, they're just beating at a million miles per hour <laughs> and they're producing so, you know, they're burning so many calories just metabolizing a lot. Yeah, 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 they have to eat constantly. And so I'm curious because 
I imagine if you're setting your body temperature to a specific location, uh, specific speed, spe- specific speed, <laughs> a specific speed, and you're deep underground or whatnot, and it means you're cold, and you're like your heart's beating very slowly. But those mole rats could live for. Really no, yeah, time. they do. They live like thirty years or so. <laughs> wow. Yeah, hell considering yeah. mice live like three years. Yeah, yeah. that's so, pretty wild. Mm-hmm. I wonder what the I wonder. I imagine moles of the clothes variety. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't live regular. As long. Yeah, regular Not moles. Naked moles. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if vanilla like, <laughs> uh, their if their burrows ever intersect and it gets really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh damn! Yeah, <laughs> your social constructs are very different from mine. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, so actually, wait, hmm? go ahead. Oh, they're also they're one of the most like one of the most socialized animals apparently mammals yeah. mm. like they're this they basically called, live in colonies yeah and really advanced colonies so a few mammals do but like they are like considered like one of the most advanced colonies it's like them and meerkats no i think it's them and other mole rats like a different <laughs> type of mole rats <laughs> there's this thing called eurosocial which means basically just means super advanced like bees type level oh, of socializing really? yeah jeez because yeah. when i think eurosocial i just mean that they smoke cheap cigarettes and like drink buck no. <laughs> <laughs> no, spend three hours eating lunch yeah, yeah. <laughs> no there's like some conditions for being eurosocial and it's like one of them's like eating your own poop or something i don't know it's yeah. something really weird <laughs> so they have like an internal system Right, so like eating their own poop is in like they, like they have complete waste management. They can like develop maybe their that's own it. Maybe that's system. it. Yeah, in the same way that bees do that as well. They, oh, they do use they? their waste products. Gross. The, yeah, gross. Dude. <laughs> we eat that. <laughs> gross, honey. <laughs> gross. It's now, like they take care of their babies, no matter yeah. whose baby it is, and they all live together. Like different generations live together peacefully. Yeah. And like there's a third condition is um, they eat their own poop. <laughs> no, no, actually, that's not. That's definitely not. What yeah, yeah. Are, are they hierarchical? Yeah, they. Oh, and it's a caste system. Yeah, okay, yeah, caste that, system. that's what I would imagine. The big difference would be mm-hmm. is that it, yeah. they, they have leadership or something. Apparently, Which, humans are not even Eurosocial. Like we haven't even <laughs> attained that level. Yeah. <laughs> someday, <laughs> someday. Like we don't take care of each other's babies, and yeah. there's no like generational. There's no. I guess not anymore. There's no. Depends on where you problems. live. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. culturally. But there's no caste system, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, but there are maybe. in a couple of places. <laughs> does that make the? Does it make India Eurosocial if they could just? take care of each other's children then you're you know india would be eurosocial mm, yeah because <laughs> they have generational houses and uh caste system so maybe that's there two, really. two yeah, yeah. two thirds of the way there so yeah, there you go <laughs> no so uh how much of this is an academic interest and how much of this is uh these are weird little guys no it's just it's entirely weird, weird little guys, guys. Yeah. yeah cool that's they good got a really long wikipedia page which is <laughs> like, only very few things have such detailed wikipedia yeah, page, yeah. it's them and like pies and, like, <laughs> 9-11 like, those, those are the only ones <laughs> Yeah, have you ever played? Uh, actually, kind of speaking of that, uh, that uh, intersection there. Have you ever played Wikipedia racing? Before? Oh yeah, 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 definitely. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Getting from pies to naked mole rat. <laughs> curious if you could make it that far. Oh, easy peasy, bro. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever done the philosophy game on Wikipedia? No, that was pretty should... interesting. It's basically you just you click the first blue hyperlink, non like notational one, like a real serious blue link, and you do this for every page it leads you to, and you'll always end up back at the philosophy Wikipedia page, like oh, every really? single time. Mm. philosophy is, of wikipedia like no the, no just philosophy wikipedia page oh, like okay, philosophy yeah. the subject yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is super interesting yeah, yeah, yeah it'll just eventually get to somebody who was a philosopher so so these these naked mole rats mm. i'm are is there is there a specific part of their character that interests you or is, is attracting you to them is it the fact that they're screwed up looking you know they're like the, the crust punks of subterranean <laughs> mammals or is it more kind of uh, uh uh you know the complexity of their system or anything along those this lines everything they have just yeah. so many interesting little things yeah. it's always noted just how weird they are in like every aspect just yeah because they're so well they've got the, the and they're like they're, they're biters <laughs> what, <laughs> yeah they're, they're, they're weird teeth yeah, yeah, for, yeah. i forgot what you call like fangs i guess yeah, yeah. they're their fangs teeth, yeah their teeth are actually in front of their lips did you know yeah, yeah so yeah, that's yeah. what i was going to say yeah. because they, they look screwed up mm-hmm. even for <laughs> you know Creatures who have large, I don't know, they forceps or no, 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 they're teeth, teeth, yeah, uh, no. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're teeth, yeah, they're teeth. <laughs> uh, but you know, like if you look at a beaver, you know, they have whack mm-hmm. teeth going on. At least uh, they're inside of their mouth, but yeah. at least they're inside of their mouth, so they're outside of their mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, their lips seal behind their teeth. Is yeah. this to make burrowing? Yeah, it makes digging a lot easier. Yeah, they don't have to eat the burrowing. <laughs> yeah, they don't <laughs> <have> to eat <laughs> everything. Yeah, because they don't really have like big ass mole claws. No, they have really skinny arms. That's that's another notable thing about them. Yeah. They're skinny, thin arms, short. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's let's bring this into uh, action uh, action items. Okay. Uh, <laughs> are you someone who would ever see themselves 
a la uh, Ron's, Rufus. Yeah, yeah. Ron Stoppable. Ron Stoppable. Rufus. From, oh, Rufus, yeah, yeah. yeah, from... Uh, I can't believe I pulled Rufus out of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah, yeah. 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 eating a... What were they? Nacho, nacho tacos. tacos. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nacho cheese. Uh, are you the kind of person that would ever want to own a mole rat? A naked mole rat? Yeah. Ooh, man, I don't know. They do look pretty gross. Yeah, yeah they do look... You don't, you don't think you'd be able to handle well, that kind of rat attitude that they've got? Well, I, I feel like <laughs> the, the ability is, to skateboard... Can you can you domesticate them? Or yeah, like no, hold they, them? there oh. are them. Um, like at zoos and whatnot, people have them in captivity. Yeah, but like well, without other mole rats, though. They can mole rats. Because you know, they're Eurosocial, so I'd imagine that... You probably need more than one. You would need least, more than yeah. one, but then you have two, and it's like, well, that's not much of a hierarchy. You, you know? need at least <laughs> 20, like minimum. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Or the mole rat would have to view you as something that is below them in the hierarchy, right? That's mm. true. Part so you can of, serve, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Be yeah. part of the hierarchy, <laughs> right? And that way they wouldn't be like super, you know, they'd be able to be uh, alone because they wouldn't feel like, you know, they have mutual attachment with you. They're your superior, right? So yeah. they're not going to, you know, crave your, your presence. You know? mm. In fact, do they, mostly just, do they just mostly eat weird grubs? No, they eat uh, mostly uh, roots and like tubers. Yeah. Oh, okay. What do they find in their mining operations? <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're called. <laughs> their mining operations. <laughs> that is that is kind of you know, when you look at you know like I, I I remember this documentary from when I was in grade school. But it was like back when they first started doing small cameras. Mm. You know, like into like their burrow. Yeah, and they'd yeah. be like, for the first time ever, we're gonna go in the burrow, right? <laughs> and then they'd have like a really bad three D render. It's like this is what the burrow looks like. <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah. And this is where we are in the borough. Uh, and yeah, it was it was incredibly complicated. And I imagine that like scent trails and all that stuff kind of allows them to go because there's a lot of subterranean critters out there. Creatures, mm. little yeah. guys. I met constant war with them in my backyard. Mm, yeah, the moles. Yeah, the yeah, moles, the moles, right. dude. And not also, of the rat persuasion. Not of the yeah. rat persuasion, just the regular big claw ass having. I like moles. the moles here. They're kind of small, they're kind of cute. A little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I think moles in general are cute. They're a cute creature. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'd say that about a mole rat though. Naked mole rat or mole? Oh, so so mole rats. Well, what? What is there? Not naked mole rats? Are there clothed mole rats? There's rat mole rats that look. Yeah, I think there's other mole rats that aren't called naked, and like they're non-naked. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they're looking at the naked ones and being like, yeah, "Okay, guy. <laughs> I hope this is a phase." Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I was saying actually based on the. Them not eating their stuff that they dig up with their teeth because they have the sealed lips, mm. which you know those must be chapped as hell. <laughs> you got dirt <laughs> hitting that, yeah, uh, yeah. but even worse, because the advantage of something that like a beaver has is that they eat everything that they chomp. Oh really? Yeah, because they they like literally eat wood, which is something. Really? Yeah, that's crazy. It is kind of crazy. I they just needed it like, for it to carry around. Yeah, so so you know you always imagine that it's just one of those stupid things that like cartoons made you think was true, right? Mm, like, yeah, you, you know they, they would eat the whole. Tree, they would eat yeah, the wood, yeah. and then they would like you know pick their teeth with another piece of wood and then throw it in and eat the p- toothpick as well. I'm sure that's from something specifically. <laughs> Looney Tunes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, they literally eat wood. That's like their primary source of food. That's crazy. And so not only do they sharpen their teeth with the wood, but then they build with the wood and they do this whole thing. Imagine if your their house... Whole yeah, imagine if your house was made out of, you know, euros. <laughs> 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 or shawarma. Delicious. <laughs> Delicious. I wish. I wish I had Brush a shawarma your teeth house. with a... Uh... The shawarmas, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Beautiful. So, yeah, it's kind of a weird s- setup with them. So I imagine, you know, of course, naked bull mole rats, they eat weird stuff, apparently their own poop and various tubers, but they mm-hmm. don't eat dirt, luckily. That's really One tuber can feed, like, a whole colony for, like, years, apparently. <laughs> for <laughs> years? Yeah, for years. <laughs> yeah. So they also don't so, so have a high metabolism. They must definitely that. eat their waste, then, because there has to be, like, a really developed internal system for that to be the case. I think usually the waste is reserved for, like, the, the brood, like, the little yeah, babies. Yeah, yeah. They, they only eat waste sometimes. Yeah, like, okay. if they're running out of root or something. <laughs> they're running out of the one tuber. <laughs> so by the tuber, you mean, like, the size of a potato? You um, usually like really big tubers. I don't know. Maybe they have yeah. big tubers in Africa or something. I don't. Yeah. Oh, also, they're from Africa. Yeah. But no, they um, they can preserve them and they can like coerce them to grow more tuber, and so they can like basically farm the whole tuber. Oh and, wow! Like, keep it around for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> so they're doing subsistence farming. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, they're just and they eat it in a very particular way so that it 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 stays healthy and it. You know, fungus free and whatnot. It's crazy. That took humans a long time yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to figure well, out. I how imagine to do. it took them a long time too. That's yeah. true. <laughs> it's kind of like, the, like eating a potato and then like putting it back in the ground. Just like, which wouldn't be very, doesn't seem very economical or, yeah. <laughs> or safe. I wonder how they do they, I wonder if they water it or, because it doesn't really, where, what parts of Africa? Um, Like uh, Eastern, Northeast. Yeah, it's Eastern. Sorry, I don't know okay. the directions. Yeah. Like Somalia and around. Yeah, yeah. So that's like, cent- like Central Eastern. Oh, uh, it's, 
I've I don't know the genre. <laughs> <laughs> it's on some horn. It's called the something yeah. horn. One of our yeah, ambassadors yeah, yeah. to another country does not know his world. Geography. Actually, no, I, don't I, know, never, I, I never went to Africa. Yeah. yeah, I don't know where Africa is actually. Yeah. I think yeah. it's like <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, I almost went to Africa a long time ago. Yeah, when I was a little kid, but. And I didn't. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, smarter minds prevailed. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, guys, this uh, this show, yes, Monomaniacs, uh, could not happen without our our patrons. Right, uh, the the most important people to us as uh, podcasters because they help make this show possible. Right, uh, allow us to meet every week and chat, and uh, you know we we are very thankful for that. And first, I want to thank our top tier patrons, which are Zach and Amber Streely. Joe Papalardo and Sammy Roberts for helping us on the top f- tier. If you're interested in uh, supporting us to that level, you also will get a shout out every episode. In addition, uh, after this, we've got a Patreon exclusive episode that you can access for five dollars a month, uh, and which things are uncensored. Yeah, that's usually how I pitch it. Because as you can imagine, John right now is just really holding back. No, yeah. Yeah, 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 he really wants to tell you what he really yeah, thinks about, about naked mole rats. About the naked <laughs> mole rats. Uh, and uh, so yeah, and we also have a, a Patreon Discord if you're interested, uh, and you can get an invite for that by joining the Patreon. As well as at the ten dollar tier, you can ask us questions that we answer on the podcast. And I got questions today from our our patrons that they'd like answered. A uh, first off from a uh, first question asker, Connor Woodfin. Oh, wow, Connor! <laughs> yeah, glad to see you asking a question, uh, making use of your of your dollars there. Uh, when is Carson Waits going to be on the show? Unrelated. When is Little Tiny going to be on the show? <laughs> uh, so Carson Waits, we'd love to have on. Uh, we should reach out to him about old this. friend. Uh, we had a radio show with him yes. on WRFH mm-hmm. Radio Free Hillsdale for. I mean, he was on the show for two years. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. I mean, it was a. It was a. Oh, there's a lot of hours. There's, there's a, lot a lot of hours. hours. If you want to hear us talk to Carson Waits, there's one place to go. Yes. Uh, but he lives in Washington D.C. right now and a but, very has a very nice job, and I don't think he wants to leave it anytime soon. But uh, <laughs> now that we have remote capabilities, he's definitely on the short list. Yes, so. exactly. And uh, when it comes to a uh, renowned rapper, Little Tiny, who is unrelated, of course, to Carson Waits, uh, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I'm never. I'm never going to say never. When yeah. It comes to Little Tiny. <laughs> All right, we got a question from Danny Wrongly, mm. who says, Danny. A question <laughs> Danny. for everyone. Suspend your morality for just a moment. Yeah, okay. What role would you serve in a criminal empire? Would you be a top dog, a bag man, a hit man, manufacturer, <laughs> fixer? What is a manufacturer? It was do? a fixer. Uh, <laughs> uh, a fixer is the guy that uh, f- fixes problems. No, no. He, well, also, you know, the guy who like sets, sets up gigs and stuff. Yeah, is what yeah, a fixer does. Yeah, but a manufacturer. List him have, again. Uh, <laughs> well, no. This is these are just examples. Right? Oh, okay, like, okay. I would be a different thing from these. Uh, we've got a, a top dog, bag man, hit man, manufacturer, fixer, that kind of a thing. All right. What about you? Come oh, on. I don't know. Criminal Empire, you said? Yeah. Yes, yes. Where would you want to act? It, it, that means it? it's probably organized. It's not just like a bunch of guys hanging out no. sort of thing. This mm-hmm. is the kind of stuff that has a, a dawn of some sort, mm-hmm. right? A top dog, a if, top you dog if you will. A hmm. top dog, if you will. Top dog. For me, personally, I've got two I would want to occupy. Yeah. Right. I would want a uh, lackey who gets shot when something goes wrong. <laughs> The guy As in, like something goes wrong and you're just in the room, and the Don gets mad yeah, and shoots, shoots me. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I would want to be that guy. <laughs> and if the bet is a good guy, because I would up, probably have like, hey, <laughs> let's get him. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but a ju- goon, if yeah, you will, a goon, but uh, but a high level goon, right? High level one goon who is close to the Don, oh. right? Like one that would have like a speech impediment or like yeah, yeah. like a defining characteristic, so the audience knew who he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, when they yeah. got sh- when he failed at admission and he came back and he was like, "I'm sorry, Don," he w- and he got shot. People would know who it is. Yeah, right? yeah. I uh, want to be that guy or or a cleaner. <laughs> would want to be a cleaner. Yeah, get in there. Just throw the headphones on. Yeah, yeah. That like that scene in in uh, John Wick. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, full circle there. Throw those headphones on and just uh, mop up some blood. There you go. Uh, I would say that I would probably be... I'm not really an ideas guy. So I think I would just be the sort of dude who they would send to do something like, we need you to tow this thing. (laughs) Like, I'd just be the guy. I'd be like the, the, you know, the errands dude. You, you know? just you would just be a, uh, a an errand boy, yeah, be an for, errand the, boy. For, for the uh, criminal empire. Yeah, hundred percent. Because it'll be something like, okay, well, 
Uh, imagine they need a vehicle for a getaway, right? And they're like, okay, well, we had, uh, you know, Jim, and Jim went, and I almost said John, but there's, you know, John is right here. <laughs> we, had, we had Jim go, and uh, he, he found the car. We had, you know, Rodrigo, and he went and he broke into the car. Uh, somebody else got uh, a license plate and all this stuff, and it's like, yeah, we got to get a couple of new wheels on that thing, though. Uh, anybody want to drive it to New Jersey so we can put them in the chop shop? And I'll be like, yeah, I can drive it to New Jersey, I guess. You know, put some spring sting on, you know fly down the highway that sort of job you know? okay yeah 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 <laughs> someone has to do the busy work somebody has to pick up bagels <laughs> <laughs> the gopher of the empire the gopher of the yeah. criminal empire exactly all right john what about you what are you oh, thinking man. i'm not uh maybe are you in the field or are you in the uh, in the headquarters i think i'd be a headquarters guy. yeah i'd be i'd probably try to be one of the like one of the top dogs, but trying to not trying to go for power or anything, just yeah. kind of sitting off to the side. <laughs> yeah, sitting in your cubicle watching mm-hmm. his Shane Gillis special yeah. <laughs> in the back sleeping, corner, sleeping under my desk. Yeah, yeah. Under your desk. Yeah. You're like, oh, uh, Don, I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> Eating cheese, or I don't know. I don't know how criminal empires work. I'm yeah, sure. exactly. A lot of yeah. cheese. A lot of cheese in criminal empires. Yeah. yeah, they're like, oh, uh, you know, you're you're. You know, you hop on a plane and then the Don is on the plane and he's walking towards you. Yeah, and like, it's oh. like you're like, oh, damn, I forgot to. You know, shred those documents. <laughs> <laughs> and he just he pulls walks. out a Colt forty five. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, everybody at the plane screams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always woman high pitched scream in all of those scenes. Yes, right? yeah. That's always a somebody getting shot in public. Yes. Yeah, there's always a, ah. All right, and we'll we'll do a spe- we'll do a third one. Why not? We'll, yeah. we'll do a third one. Um, this is from Samuel Roberts, uh, who asks, "What are your New Year's resolutions?" Uh, my New Year's resolution is I'm doing a dry January, and I'm just continuing to do life. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think that I... My, my New Year's resolution is to make it to 2024, I guess. Nice. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 Something it's like that. On the other side. I, I, don't, I don't really believe in doing like the, I'm going to... Because I always drop something like that after like three three weeks or a month and a half or something. <laughs> so you have no hope whatsoever. You just give up initially. No, I, I'm I'm doing self-improvement every day, but not. I don't have to set out. Big man over I don't here. have to write down my goals and make a huge deal about it, mm. you know? Well, somebody, you know, Look, all these kids on their newfangled phone devices, you know, not reading books, <laughs> book bad, phone good, <laughs> <laughs> that sort of stuff, you know? Like, they feel like they got to post about this. No. I'll probably buy more re- records and, like, I don't know. Spend less time wasting time, hopefully. I don't know. Yeah, wow. You have yeah. such an interesting year ahead of you, Shell, right? <laughs> right? Just beautiful. Got a lot on my a lot of a lot on my plate right now. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't I'm plate. definitely I'm trying to start drinking more alcohol. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. That's something you like, Well you're allergic. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little allergic. I just got cancer. So it's not it's not like it's the worst thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a problem for future me. So yeah. 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 So I know that your your sister, your former guest uh, Jane O'Connor, mm. a friend of the show, Jane O'Connor, has said that uh, she has a hard time, you know, drinking uh, because of the Asian glow. Mm, yeah, definitely. Uh, mm. Do you do you have a similar amount of of issue there? Or yeah, I mean, I've never actually seen her drink that much, so yeah, I don't know how bad it gets, but for me, it gets pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. basically get a hangover immediately, and that's yeah. about all that comes out of. Is drinking. it just like red face and headache, or? Yep, mm-hmm. that's yeah. the whole thing. Like barely, I don't really feel it. I feel it for like half an hour to an hour. Kind of interesting. Usually, I go like too tipsy, and then it's immediately into hangover. Yeah, like that's the yeah. progression. So that just sounds like hell. Yeah. If Wait. you do it, if you if you know how to handle it, it's not too bad. So is that actually like legitimately like a genetic strain? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In that region. So then, you know, I I mean, I worked for a guy <laughs> who was Korean, like full blooded, mm. right? He he was he was he was direct immigrant, and I mean, he drank you know, in secret, but he drank. <laughs> and, you know, he would tell us all these stories about him, you know, singing at bars because he was a like a trained opera singer or whatever. And he would be like, yeah, I would sing at bars for drinks and all this stuff. And it's like, you know, they have pretty developed drinking culture yeah, yeah. in Korea. Yeah. It's like, so, you know, do these there guys, are. do they just champ it? Like all these guys are like, yeah, some this do. is just what happens when you drink. Definitely some do. Yeah. And they get really red, but they just deal with it. Yeah. Um, and some, a lot of people actually don't don't have this condition. Okay. So it's like a third of all East Asians have it. Yeah. And I actually, everyone in my family has like a further condition, which a third of like that third also have, which makes it even worse. So it's oh, like, okay. most people don't have it as bad as yeah, they, they, just, my they just get like a little hot or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And is, most is, Asians can't just drink anyway. So. Yeah. Is this a uh, a curse or a secret boom in your, in your mind? 
Um, I think it's a. It might be a good thing. Mm. My dad's family has like a little history with alcoholism. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My grandma's drinking a lot these days. I'm like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> she starts and like as soon as she wakes up, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so I I appreciate that. I probably will never. That'll never happen to me. But mm-hmm. yeah, but I do hear there's like benefits to drinking, like um, small amounts, in, yeah, like nutritional or what's it called, like actual benefits, like scientific ones, not mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. but also socializing ones, like. Um, like you know, the greatest society is always built on like yeah, on around alcohol. drinking. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, damn, am I not part of <laughs> yeah the great society? society? You're not yeah. a part of the Western tradition. That's the funny yeah. thing is, is that like you know, all these people who like to argue that uh, psychedelics are a much more enlightening or a better path as far as civilization civilization yeah. is concerned. It's like all well, the societies built on psychedelics, they don't exist anymore. <laughs> really? Were there societies? Oh yeah, like I guess I, like Incan or something. Well, the, the, you know, there. So the, I, I don't know necessarily. I guess you have the Incans and like with a lot of South America and Central America with ayahuasca and stuff. But you know, the the Celts, mm. um, you know, the the Gauls, you know, uh, like a lot of the Central European tribes and stuff. They did a lot of psilocybin. I mean, the Vikings did a lot of psilocybin. <laughs> a lot, you know, they they did a lot of hallucinogenic drugs as a part of you know like religious initiations, as a part of um, you know developments into like initiations into manhood, that sort of thing. You know, a big thing in Native American culture as well. And you know, I guess they were just not really too wrong. busy doing that and not busy enough developing gunpowder, and it just didn't work out. But they're actually we. Uh, what a Eurocentric. I know. I, I'm just. <laughs> I realize that, like, as I'm saying this, that that's that's where it's going to come across. And yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm just going to double down. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no. I mean, like, if you think about Rome, you know, they didn't do, you know, psychedelics. I mean, I'm sure that they did in some capacity, uh, but they just they boozed. Actually, it's interesting. The Greek. We have a lot of Greek descriptions of being drunk, like people yeah. write about their experience being drunk. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times, it's it's really weird and crazy, like not yeah. the kind of drunkenness we're used to. And yeah. we think it's because they have like mold growing on some of their yeah yeah the the what's it called the grains they use to make alcohol, mm-hmm. which kind of like were psychedelic and like yeah. did affect their their thinking. But also the Greeks are gone, so I guess yeah yeah. But <laughs> well, there's there's also the. Uh, um, it's like it's the reason that absinthe's illegal in the United States of America. Mm. Do you know about this? No, I, I didn't even know it was illegal. Yeah, so absinthe is well, you can buy absinthe, but it's not real absinthe. Mm. So like absinthe has a certain like composition uh, that was, you know, many people claimed was hallucinogenic, mm. in that all of these people in New York and New Orleans and like these major metropolitan areas were drinking it too much and they were like it was a moral panic it was like the equivalent of you know video games cause violence sort of thing where it's like all of these people are doing all of this stuff when they drink for loco or you know etc but it was yeah. absent it was like people are going what a crazy, crazy time of our yeah. lives that was well, so the, the thing four is, loco is that years. scotland <laughs> has had their own for loco for years right yeah and it's like eight times as powerful as for loco <laughs> and they cannot ele- like they've tried so many times to legalize it they can't it's called buck fast it's this it's stuff called tonic wine and it's like it's, it's eight servings of caffeine <laughs> it's eight servings of caffeine in a bottle that's like this tall and it's it's something crazy like 14 percent alcohol content and eight <laughs> servings of caffeine. Uh, it's, it's 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 wild. You cannot buy it outside of it's it's a schedule four drug. Like you can't if you bring it to America, like you you will go to federal prison. <laughs> but uh, beautiful. yeah, beautiful. But um, absent, you know, it was all of these socialites and all these artists and stuff. It was like really popular in the scene at the time, and all these people would have hallucinogenic events where they'd go home after drinking all night, and they would like just you know. Turns out that. They had just had really bad insulation in a lot of these apartment buildings, and there was this period where, like, they hadn't developed um, like their wallpaper properly, and there was mold just rampant <laughs> in all of their apartments. That so, was hallucinogenic. Yeah, it was. It was mildly hallucinogenic, and so they would get back from drinking too much, and then just like skits out uh, because <laughs> they drank, you know, right, breathed in too much of their apartment air. But uh, <laughs> so beautiful. That's, that's why absence <laughs> illegal in in America, and it's in its traditional. Why didn't, why didn't other alcohols have that same effect? Why is it? Um, I think that the other alcohols did, but the thing is, the absinthe does have a really high percentage, mm. and so, so you drink a lot of it. So people would drink a lot of it. They'd get super drunk and they would go home, and like you know, they you could do that with anything, but it was just very popular at that time with a certain class of people, mm. and that class of people kind of got affected by it. It's like when people say, like when you know, I read some of the moral panic articles about Buckfast because people are like, we need to legalize <laughs> Buckfast, and the big thing is they're like. 
the combination of alcohol and caffeine makes people violent, and the any all of this violent crime is linked to people being drunk on Buckfast. And you have to have the question: Well, is it because absolute monsters drink this stuff? <laughs> you know, it's like somebody who's going to commit a violent crime is much more likely to say eight servings of caffeine and fourteen percent alcohol. Hell yeah! Right? Uh, that's sort of where the where the rubber hits the road on that. So I don't know. Interesting. I don't know. Huh. But actually, what about you? What's your New Year's resolution? My New Year's resolution? Yeah. Uh, I uh, am am looking to be more productive in my hobbies. Uh, okay. And to just be less work focused after work. Right. I find that you know nowadays, uh, I. I mean, this has sort of been a problem for years for me, but I always like go to bed thinking about work and like wake up and immediately think about work. And because I work yeah. from home, it's like I go to bed thinking about work. I wake up. Have you silenced notifications on your phone? Uh, I do after a period of time, okay. but like it's like ten four forty five. Well, not ten forty five. It's like ten fifteen. But um, you know, because I work for a company that's in California, and so I have to be accessible for like a, an hour or two after I'm done with work. And when yeah. I'm done with work at seven o'clock, that means I'm going to bed <laughs> at 10 and I've only had an hour technically off work. So yeah, yeah, I'm trying to work and work on that balance is my, my goal for mm. the year. Uh, yeah, there's nothing like nebulous goals to, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, something non-concrete <laughs> that I haven't that I'm written. I'm trying to work on this. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever, dude, you don't get, to, you don't get. To no, talk. I know. I'm, kind yeah, of, I'm yeah. not, I'm, I'm, I am throwing, you know, mud at another person in mud. So. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> uh, at least I understand that. Yeah. At least I understand that. There you go. Goodness. Yeah. So do we, do we want to go back on naked mole rats? I mean, yeah, I have a few more facts. Okay, yeah, hit us want. with some more some mole rat knowledge, dude. Um. Okay. Now. <laughs> 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 I just said I have facts. Dude, now, you have set expectations. You better deliver. Oh my gosh, I'm actually lost for all my mole rat facts. <laughs> it's okay. Is are there any cultures that have like a? I always kind of I feel like the mole rat is one of those things where. A culture, a tribe, or like a, a nationality would just discover it and say, "This is, we are, you know, making this a part of our national character." It's like the thing about us is more ads. Yeah, we have more ads. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah, they just kind of live. I think I would probably uh, tell the rest of the tribe that there are de- demons in the ground. <laughs> yeah, saw one of those things. <laughs> Small demon children. There's living scrotums all over. Them. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> we are yeah, being though. punished. Yeah. <laughs> the idea of grabbing them, like touching them, is just such a weird. Because like, yeah. would they just feel like me? Is that like <laughs> they kind of look like me? Yeah, it's just really ashy and scaly. Though. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, 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 that'd be. The, I, I imagine holding one would be an insanely unpleasant experience <laughs> because first off, they look disgusting and. They're not slimy, which is great. Because if they were slimy, they'd be a lot. But I imagine they skitter and they claw, so they just, you know, just yeah, cut yeah, you yeah. apart. And it's like, ah, oh, they don't itch though. They do not. Unlike other rodents, they do not itch. So, so, wait, how? So that's a fact. If you got <laughs> I want to say, is their skin he produce did, like he a did certain, promise fat? They, yeah, it's it has to do with like producing like oils, his, histamines, oh, is, like okay. the thing that you get when you're like allergic to things. Yeah, yeah. It's, like they just don't produce it for some reason. Whereas other rodents do. I don't know why they do, but it makes other rodents itchy. And they just can't get itchy because they can't produce it. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. Yeah, because I feel like every time I see a, a mouse in something, it's always it's scratching its ear. Apparently, naked mole rats do not itch. Wow. Also, they're like immune to like acid and <laughs> spikes. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> it sounds like you're describing like a like a like a video game monster or something. No, oh, okay. Yeah. I don't think they're actually like you did something acid. Like, they're chill. No, no, you, no, no, you you sound like a small child being like, and it's immune to acid and uh, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's it's spiked. It's got a uh, an anti shield shield. <laughs> <laughs> so so as, as in like, if you were to drop something acidic on it with a high pH, like it would just kind of fall off no 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 i don't think they would die if you dunk them in acid yeah well i imagine but like they're just more resistant than they are not they can't feel the pain of acid that's what they can't do there we go Mm. they can't feel the pain of acid or of spices like capsaicin oh okay that's not something they can register at all. They're, so, so their nerve receptors don't even pick they, it yeah, up. They can't. So, so you, like, you could drop it in acid and it would be like, I'm dying. and I had no idea it's dying. It's yeah, like, it, I like that. Actually. It's like Terminator 2. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait, so this actually comes down to a big argument that I've had multiple times with people because they claim this is not a true fact. I, I'm standing by it. I've looked it up mm-hmm. since and I, I, I will stand by it. But the there's a lot of arguments that claim that fish... Aren't capable of feeling pain mm, for the I've same that, reason, yeah. yeah, because they don't have the nerve structure to even like they'll they'll 
I mean, maybe this is how it works for the mole rats. They'll be conscious of the thing. They'll be like, ah. Oh. <laughs> That's acid? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, acid. Or like, they'll be like, oh, my fin got ripped off. And they're like, oh, man, this is bad. And they'll have like a response to being like, this is a bad negative thing that's happened to me. But they don't like feel what we would describe as pain. Well, right? actually, the naked mole rats, it's not to do with their nervous receptors, I don't think. Okay. Because they can't feel pain on their skin. Like, that's just something they can't do at all. They cannot feel pain at all on their skin. Yeah, on their skin. I'm not so sure. you could give them a little pinch and they'd and be like, whatever, dude. I don't give a. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's something to do with some sort of thing they don't produce called substance p they don't produce a thing <laughs> okay substance okay. p chemical, all right chemical okay. x <laughs> yeah. So I, feel like we, I, I, yeah, I feel like we brought a fake expert on really yeah yeah <laughs> no, okay this is true, yeah. this is true about <laughs> substance p and so if it, you inject them with substance p they can feel the acid <laughs> yeah, that <would> be, <laughs> <laughs> that's like so, such a like yeah, scientists yeah. absolutely screw with so like, like, what if i allowed him to feel pain <laughs> Just imagine you've never felt pain your entire life, and then some asshole like is like, and you're like, oh my gosh, no! It's like the why did you program me to feel, feel pain? pain? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's 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 hilarious that we just go yeah, around the naked mole at an existential crisis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's man. hellish. Dude, that, yeah, that naked mole rat, man. I wonder if it just if if it goes home different. The mm. uh, so. That naked bull rat's not going home. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's be, true. Let's be, this goes back yeah. to its white cage. But so, does that mean they don't have like super strong? I don't know because uh, do they do they just not have strong situational awareness? Like, because I I imagine I think what their primary sensory nature is through their whiskers, right? Or oh, they do have long whiskers. I don't know about that. I imagine it'd be through their whiskers or through their nose. Also smelling, yeah, smelling. But. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do they just not like feel anything on their body? Or yeah, I is guess it they just... can like crawl on each other and not. Actually, they do huddle together, so they're aware of when yeah. each other around. But I don't know. I guess they just don't have personal space. Yeah, I guess not. Yeah, I guess maybe. <laughs> I mean, I've known a couple of naked bull rats in my time. Have you? <laughs> People without personal space. <laughs> oh, this is a joke. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah me and you know about... naked. Bull rats? <laughs> <laughs> what are their names? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look at me with like some real skepticism. I double down. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> You know, Ch- I, Chet, uh, you know, I, I, know, I ran into him at a pig in D.C. And, you know, we got coffee. He was a really cool guy. <laughs> well, not a guy. Yeah, but... yeah, he spilled coffee on his lap. He just didn't do anything. <laughs> you Euro-socialized with them. Yeah, yeah. Euro-socialized. <laughs> you took care of each other's broods. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, man, yeah, I... I... <laughs> it's, those are one of those creatures, though, that I feel like appeals primarily to, you know, that like thing in the 90s and like early 2000s where people were into stuff that was gross. Mm. Do you remember? Yeah. Nope, yeah. I yeah. Not. I imagine you don't I'm a post 9 11. No, I'm pre 9 11. Oh. Yeah. I was just, I wasn't conscious. Yeah. You, weren't, you weren't conscious. But there was this thing where like, you know, and this will come into stuff nowadays periodically where, you know, people like, kids you know you always you always hear horror stories about like kids like watching youtube and the algorithm like just ending up mm. on them watching pimple popping videos for like six <laughs> hours or something those are so gross i don't know how yeah. anyone watches them. no yeah. my 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 wife went through a phase apparently in college and i i just couldn't i no. couldn't you know. ian ian calvert yeah he loves that <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's hope you didn't uh that wasn't too personal yeah. <laughs> he doesn't watch this he's not on the internet anymore so yeah good. yeah good for him we can trash talk him all we want yeah hell yeah dude. <laughs> <laughs> Lanky ass, <laughs> uh, but smiles hair, too much. His hair might be red. I can't tell. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, strawberry blonde ass. You know, uh, but the uh, you know it was like you, there was this thing where kids, you know, kids were supposed to be into stuff that was gross. You know, like you'd have mm-hmm. a toy that was like a like a ball that you would squeeze and it would have eyes and the eyes would like pop out and have veins or you know you would uh you know you have a slime and whatnot people kids are into slime but like for not gross reasons now yeah modern day slime is very like it's very uh really? surgical <laughs> <laughs> have you seen this no. yeah, yeah. so there's this whole thing on youtube for like kids youtube where it's slime oriented content where like they'll oh, yeah, yeah, they'll yeah. make mm-hmm. slime and like but it's usually like it'll be like two adults like with weirdly high-pitched voices like oh yeah stretching slimes yeah or yeah, something like the gumai what's it called gumai kandai yeah you ever yeah seen that? I don't know if I've seen that, but I think I've heard the, the phrase. Oh, G-Li, B-Li, Gumai, Pete Rat, Kandai. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> one of the uh, greats. One of the greats. <laughs> one of the greats. But, you know. Mad the, respect. But, like, back in the day when something had slime on it, it was, like, because it was disgusting. And you were supposed to be like, yeah. There'd be, like, flies, like, plastic flies really? in it or whatever. And yeah. it's like, this yeah. is gross, yeah. you know. 
And like, you know, I remember one of the first big history or one of the first history books I read as a kid was a book about gross history and about stuff that was gross mm, in history, nice. right? Yeah. Okay, I do kind of remember that. Actually. Yeah, yeah. I think I had some of those books growing up. And yeah, and so stuff like that where you start to think, you know, and I remember, and this is actually around the time when like Kim Possible was popular and it would make sense of a naked mole mm. rat. But like a naked mole rat was a sort of a, was it felt like a creature for like that generation. Mm-hmm. Where we were like, oh yeah, this but, is uh, gross and weird. I've, we've talked about this on the podcast before, but the favorite uh, gross out fact was when we had uh, the bible for boys yeah <laughs> that had a little uh, gross out facts in it yeah like, yeah yeah right, is so. that a real thing yeah yes, it was, it like, was yeah. and when he washed the feet they'd have been real he's stinky, stinky. <laughs> yeah. because he hadn't washed i mean them probably for days. that's probably true yeah. Yeah, it's probably true there it probably stank but uh also very dry though so probably not that stinky um, mm, that would probably be super satisfying like it's all dusty and you're yeah. like I don't know. That seems satisfying. Yeah, no. Yeah, that's a save that for the Patreon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's a. It's like one of those pressure washing videos, but it's <laughs> disciples' Her feet. feet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, uh, hell yeah. Yeah, no. That's that's always that's sort of kind of where uh, naked mole rats kind of sit in my mind, yeah, I mean, or like something be, that like a moth, uh, like a mall goth would be into. Yeah. To, mm-hmm. to be fair, I think like we probably used to talk about naked mole rats a lot more often in our culture. I don't know why. <laughs> like, that's really weird to say, but, like, I... I, I it's like, not, it sounds like you're reading a lot into this. No, just, like, I feel like s- when we were younger, like, we would either make jokes or say the phrase <laughs> naked mole rat a more. lot more than we do, no, or people yeah. do now. Yeah. Right. Watching, when I was watching Kim Possible when I was that age or so, mm-hmm. it was all about mm-hmm. naked mole rats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, maybe time is sort of past the naked mole rat. Yeah. But apparently, though, the, there's a tight-knit group of biologists and hobbyists who are keeping yeah. the naked mole rat you know, alive. About. Who know a lot about naked mole rats? Yeah, so. yeah. R slash naked mole rat. <laughs> Does that mean that like that's Ru- a completely different thing, by the way? Yeah, <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> but are like Ron Stoppable and Rufus? Did they have to like sleep naked together or something? Or like, mm. or, like how does how do you keep how do you as take I care? Said, of it? I said Rufus views him as a lesser. That's, right? Well, I mean, he he would he acts like that. He acts yeah. like he owns every room. Yeah, and that scamp. Yeah, <laughs> that, that little scamp Rufus. Actually, uh, Kim Possible is credited with bringing. Naked mole rats into like the mainstream, like supposedly really? that's what a lot of people think. Yeah, mm-hmm. was and that it on? was around early two thousands. Yeah, so, so, wait, so like, was there a section in, on the Wikipedia article titled "Cultural uh, Impact" and then you know had that? In no, there, there was not. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine that though, because I don't, I don't, you know, I mean, how do you hear about this obscure tunneling rodent in Africa? Well, the guy who created it. And who want who included who created a Kim Possible? No, oh, I thought you were gonna say created the naked mole. Yeah, rat. Guy, yeah, John God. naked mole rat. Kim <laughs> naked roll. <rat. laughs> no, he he was at the zoo with his kids, and they were looking at naked mole rats, and they're like, "Wow, this is super cool." And then he gets like a note from Disney, and they're like, "You have to include some sort of animal in your TV show." And he's like, "Oh, my kids love naked mole rats. I'll just include that." And so that's how it the got naked in mole there. rat. Mm-hmm. A Man. legend was born. It could have been like Rufus the porcupine. You know? Oh yeah, that would have been. Yeah, it was whack. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine a porcupine eating nacho cheese. Come on, <laughs> not, yeah, I can't do it. Not once. happening. Yeah, <laughs> even, I would not say what a scamp. <laughs> I'd say gross. It's gonna be in your spines for weeks. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I would be saying uh, to, to that porcupine. Yeah. Uh, man. Well, thank you, John, for having. Uh, coming on, on. Yeah, thank you for having yeah. me. Yeah. I was about to say show. thank you for having us, but I, <laughs> I, I realized we're having you. Yeah, yes, actually, yes, yes. But uh, really, the, allowing us into your personal space more than anything. Yeah, yeah. thank you for ha- having us into your personal space. It's you know, uh, it's it's an honor. You know, yeah. as <laughs> in this hero social uh, community that we have created, <laughs> yes. this table right now. If no, you have young anytime soon, just let me know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If what? If you have young anytime soon, I'll take young, care yeah, of them. Yeah, my brood. Yeah, my yeah I'll let you know when I got a brood going. Yeah. Uh, thank you for having a. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So <laughs> good. Double down. Double we just down. did a riff on it for like five minutes. <laughs> double double, double down. Double down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for coming on, uh, and we'll uh, talk a bit more about all this stuff on the, the Patreon. Patreon. So feel free to, to to clock in. Is there anything that you want to plug or anything that you know? Where can people mm. find you? You know, you don't have to. I mean, most people that we have on the show don't have that okay. sort of thing. But you know, um, if that's the camera. Yeah. yeah. I need a job, so <laughs> if anyone wants to give me one. Or I'm about to graduate from college, so I kind of need one of those. Yeah. Well, as you can tell, this guy's he's a, he's a he's a bright kid. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Smart. Cookie You'll want him sleeping under his desk at uh, <laughs> <laughs> your business of choice. Uh, all right. Well, thanks for coming on, and yeah. uh, see you guys on the Patreon.